There we go. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Jeez, <laughs> stretch. Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is Andrew from the Phone Bros, and I am here with my friend Channy. Hi. And as you guys may know, Manhattan has amazing food, but it also can get really, really expensive. So to get your true value, everybody knows that you gotta go out to the boroughs. So that's why today we are going on a food crawl around Elmhurst and Flushing, Queens. So we're gonna check out five of our favorite and most coolest venues that we could find between these two diverse neighborhoods. So growing up, these spots were never around, so I'm excited to show you guys. But you haven't been here often. You don't come enough. I come to Queens sometimes. Yeah. I do. I know the food is really good. You're I, not I come here for it. Let's, Let's go. go. I'm here with one of the owners from Joju. My name is Julie, so I'm with you in Joju. We wanted some other besides pork all the time. So when you go to Chinatown, it's always a cha siu pork. We brought local beef to it. We have kuni pork belly. Two years ago, I ate the bun meats, and I was like, I really like that and the fries. Kimchi fries. Look at this runniness. Oh. oh. But today, I'm going to be eating the bowl because bowls are like really popular now. Oh, yeah. And ours is like a rainbow, so you'll see. It's a rain bowl. <laughs> yeah, rain bowl. <laughs> Because I have the caramel pork bowl, and then you have the lemongrass bowl. Yes. No, that's I really like nice. the taste of the yolk. The egg itself is like, it's sauce. Like these it vegetables kind of balances are it out. perfectly like pickled. It's oh. not too sour. It's just, For sure. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna hit it with the jalapeno sauce though. Okay, that's all you, I, I can't really? have the spice. I thought Koreans eat spicy food. I know, but my nose gets like all weird. I start drooling. And <laughs> you think bowls are the future? Like you think everybody's just gonna eat everything out of a bowl? Some people don't even like using utensils. I think burritos will stick around. Can we like wrap this up to go? Easy, put a lid on it. <laughs> on to our next spot. Okay, we are outside of the second spot in Elmhurst, right up the street on Broadway. And this is supposedly Andrew's favorite food. He won't stop talking about it all the way here. Poached chicken or rice. But this spot right here is Thai style, so this is Khao Moon Gai. I'm here with Bobby from Khao Moon Gai. What's the main difference between the Singaporean style that a lot of people are used to and also the Thai style? The main difference in my mind, yeah. the sauce, more spicy, more tasty. Yeah, I love this spot and I love this dish. I always think that there should be a spot like this in Manhattan. So Chani, as you can see, this spot specializes in chicken rice because there is only it's chicken great. and rice. It's not even different options, it's just how much of it do you want? <laughs> Khao Moon Gai is Khao the Thai Gai. version, part of the Chinese sub-cuisine of Thailand because there are so many Chinese people in Thailand. Okay, so we got the rice here. The rice is flavored with chicken stock. I want to dunk it in my soup. Yes, I heard the soup is good with the rice. Yeah. It's so hearty, I could eat this without the chicken. That's what some people have been saying, that the sauce and the rice are actually the main dish, and then the chicken is just a condiment. It's, a it's just a way to eat the sauce and the rice. That is moist. Really it's soft. It kind of like melted my mouth. It tastes healthy, doesn't it? It is. How do you tell apart the gizzard okay. and the liver? So the liver looks a little bit more like a chocolate truffle, and then the gizzard is going to look more almost like a uh, tendon or muscle. Okay. I'm gonna pass. Take a, take a little bit. Seriously? Come on, it's for camera. Yeah. <laughs> I can't bring you anywhere. For the longest time, I thought gizzard was a butthole. I used to get upset at my mom. Every time she said, oh, it's chicken, I take a bite. It's butthole! <laughs> Let me tell you this. Any little type of red color you see in Thai food is really spicy. Napkin in case your nose blows. Wow. <laughs> Now we gotta head out to Flushing. Flushing. Let's go. Boom. And we are back in your hometown, about to eat. <laughs> this some is what I'm familiar with. I love it. So we're in front of a place called Sodam. Technically, there's like an old saying that says like "Kumasen Sodamida," which translates to "That taste is." Lit. It's good, it's memorable, it's treasurable, it's unique. So, so tamita. So tamita. <laughs> so no, let's show you. You know what this reminds me of? It's like the red. 
Red Sea. Hard it in half. Quite a Biblical charming. story. Oh! <laughs> You're gonna need help with that. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, stretch. But here with us, we got owner Abe. Abe, yo, thank you for What's being up? here. Cheese skillet. Okay. So it's kimchi fried rice and a meat dish that's separated by a river of cheese. Over here we got, uh, it's called the secret skillet. If that's a river of cheese, this is an island of kimchi fried rice. And the water surrounding it is actually cheese and corn and egg. Mm -hmm. In Korea, it's really popular, you know, to just have a uh, corn and cheese and an egg separately. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I figured, you know, why not put it all together and put it into a dish. I'm trying to go in the direction of like catering to like a younger crowd, going with a bit of a fusion. It's like a Korean take on pho. Is it a pho restaurant or a Korean spot? You're like, it's actually, we have a Korean pho. And we're just, everything. We're just appealing to everybody. Oh my God, even the egg stretches. Oh my, oh my God, God. so good. That? Mm. I love that the egg is not fully really cooked. The yolk no. is still running. Korean foods, we have so much spicy stuff mm -hmm. that it's the cheese that kind of like hones it down and makes it tolerable. I love this dish. There's like different bites to it. It's like fluffy egg and then you get the sweet corn and then there's like those chunks of grilled cheese that are like kind of stuck to the bottom. <laughs> this used to be your block. Mm -hmm. How's it feel to be back right now? I feel nostalgic. Not much has changed. Stores maybe, but the overall aesthetic, generally the same. You know what I love about the skillet is that the skillet keeps the food hot. Ah! There we go, see? You doubted. <laughs> you doubted. Korean food kind of resembles Mexican food in a way because you guys take a lot of the similar flavors like the kimchi flavor or the gochujang flavor mm -hmm. but then you're able to flip it into so many different dishes and even this area there's a good mix of Spanish people Korean people and Chinese people mm -hmm. that's kind of what I liked about growing up here it just felt very diverse chicken wings you gotta have these <laughs> this is like a staple I do that thing where I pull out one bone so I can eat it all as one piece wow. wait there's a bone in oh it was so, so damn, damn good. good. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. I didn't it's mean true. to say it, but it had to be said. We got two more spots to go, so let's go check them out. Yo, what's going on? All right, we are here at Java Day Cafe. That is a hash brown wrap. I've never seen this before. And then here we have the breakfast quesadilla. Bell peppers, I see tomato. That's nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Mm. I'm gonna take a bite of this hash brown. There's egg, mushroom, sausage. Mm. It's so cheesy. Mm. Mm. You know mushrooms is one of those things that I actually grew up hating. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of kids don't like it. String but, beans too, I hated it, but as you get older, you start liking it. I would like to uh, maybe uh, issue an official apology to, <laughs> to mushrooms and <laughs> eggplants. And All right guys, that wraps it up here at Java Day. You guys should definitely check it out. We're about to go down and check out a spot called White Noise Coffee. And that's where we're gonna end off our crawl. Ho oh, ho, okay, Chandy, we have eaten a lot of food. Yes, we have. We are coming to the end where we are gonna end off with some nice dessert, because I really need it. You always have room for dessert. There was like a recent study done where pretty much if your mind is focused on something that you want, your body will start to physically, literally make room for more food to get inside. here with owner Vanessa. Vanessa, you have a really cool spot. Good Thank job you. on it. So basically, I'm from like the third wave industry. One day I came to this neighborhood, it was pretty dark. I thought it needed a little bit of change. So here I am with my experience, with what I think I can do and offer for the neighborhood. Um, I opened this place up and hopefully we'll be able to change the whole vibe of this place. I wanted to uh, really provide uh, good quality, high quality mm -hmm. coffee for like even my parents' age yeah, range. Well, you want to make it accessible to everybody. Like, yes. you know, there's not that many good coffee shops here. Yeah. There's a lot of bakeries, but like maybe not people actually focusing on the right, coffee right, itself. Right, right, okay. I mean, it's all very hands-on, so we care about each drink. Can we just talk about this acai bowl real quick? First of all, it looks? it's freezing. Like the bowl itself is so cold. That's nice. That's how you know it's good. We've got this cold dessert right here. Is, is acai 
bowl, breakfast or dessert? I would say breakfast. It's cold and sweet and refreshing. But it is Could a be a dessert. Because this has Nutella drizzled all over it right here. Dessert, it has Nutella, that's it. Yeah. Man, this is called Off the Road. And this is like a breakfast all in one because you got banana, granola, pistachios, you have the blended acai, and then you have this, I think almond butter right here. Mmm, look at that. Wow, that's good. Between the acai berries that are blended and then this almond butter, it actually kind of gives you a peanut butter and jelly taste. No way. Yeah, get some of that peanut butter and jam of a berry. Yeah. I like this a lot. Mm. I'm full. You are in full and happy. I mean. <laughs> Shout out to the latte art too. It's always interesting how they do latte art because they like pour the milk into a pattern. That sounds hard. Man, it's so good. Yo, Chani, how come when you hold that up, you look like the Statue of Liberty? <laughs> <laughs> Black sesame and raw milk flavor. Mm. Wow, that's definitely different, yeah. That milk, it's it really rich. tastes like, I know what they mean by raw milk flavor. It's like not too sweet, so it doesn't taste like ice cream really, but it has almost like a slight, you wanna say cultured taste, like a cheese almost. Tastes like soy milk. All right, everybody, so that pretty much wraps up our Elmhurst to Flushing food crawl. We went from Broadway to Northern. What can you take away from this whole thing? I think overall this area is just growing. It's just becoming much more diverse. It's catering a lot of interesting foods. This dessert is really good. Like, it's just, there's a lot more to expect. Queens is pretty much developing a bunch of its own restaurants that kind of give you that city feel yeah. without having to go to the city. Apartments too. But everybody in the comments below, let me know where else we should hit up and, and let me know if you thought this stuff was cool. Again, follow Chani down below. We're out in New York City. And until next time, I'm out. Peace. Best thing about these food crawls, it's like, it's tough because the first spots that you go to, you always end up eating more. And then as you go down the line, you eat less and less. Um, it doesn't mean that the food is any less. It's just that literally I don't have any more space <laughs> in my stomach.